No offense, son, he told Delbert, but I'm not letting you in my jail until you clean up some. Glenn turned to me. Take the prisoner around back to the pump and wash off some of that gumbo, then bring him in the back way. I unpinned the badge from my shirt. I signed on to fetch him back, not wash him, I said. That supper I'm buying tonight includes fresh apple pie. All right, I said, putting the badge back on, but I draw the line at tucking him in and reading him a bedtime story. Meek as a lamb and naked as truth, Delbert hunkered under the pump spout while I worked the handle. When I cleaned him up as well as I could, Glenn gave him a blanket to wrap himself in and set him by the wood stove to dry. Delbert was shivering like a wet dog and his teeth were chattering, but he looked some better anyway. I gave Glenn the stolen money and the kid's revolver and made ready to go. I'll take old Mildred to the livery, I told Glenn, and fetch Delbert's horse back. I'll see you at Ignacio's around six. I'm obliged, Merlin, Glenn said. See you then. Just before I walked out the door, I said my goodbyes to Delbert. Just curious, I said, but that job you mentioned, was there some place special you were headed? Lander, Wyoming, he said. When Billy Christmas stopped by the Oasis this spring, he told me I should come see him there if I was ever down that way. You remember Billy Christmas, don't you, Merlin? Oh, yes, I said. I remember Billy Christmas. Now, before I tell you about Billy Christmas and what he has to do with anything, I need to step off the trail a pace or two and tell you about Thane McAllister and his daughter, Julie. Thane McAllister was about the biggest cowman in our part of the country, and his M-Cross ranch took in the better part of Progress County. When I say McAllister was a big cowman, I mean that his range covered a heap of territory and he had more cattle than God. But Thane was big in other ways, too. He had a big bank account, big ambitions, and a heart the size of a buffalo's. Thane was big-bodied, too. He weighed right at 300 pounds, and when he walked around, the earth shook. He sat a big saddle, of course, which meant any horse he rode had to carry pretty near 350 pounds. His personal mounts were big, blocky horses that tipped the scales at better than 1,250 pounds each. They tended to be slow starters, but they were hell for stout. Racing beef was good business in that year of 1885. A man could buy a steer for $5, sell it for between $45 and $60, and run his entire operation on free government grass. There were losses, of course. Wolves, rustlers, and winterkill took their toll. But there was real money in cattle, especially for the big operators. Like I said, Thane McAllister was one of the biggest. Now you would think that with all his money, Thane would be a happy man, but that's not how it was. My pa used to say money can't buy happiness, but it can rent it sometimes. 